Although at times in this documentary I and others might get passionate about what we believe and stand for, we don't mean to try to make anyone feel bad or uh, not good enough or that we are better than you. It's just a compassionate response that we have to what we witness and our eyes are opened to what's happening to animals. The next great social revolution is the battle against speciesism to eliminate animal exploitation by humans. Animal liberation activists have uncovered jaw-dropping footage from factory farms and slaughterhouses. Farmed animals are sensitive, sentient social creatures that can express empathy. They have feelings, emotions, personalities and families, just like cats and dogs. They are intelligent, in fact pigs are said to be as intelligent as dogs. They become visibly distressed when for example their newborns are taken from them or they're about to face death. Is it possible for humans to be animal lovers and animal abusers and consumers at the same time? Cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort that someone feels when they simultaneously hold two different contradictory beliefs. We must align our actions with our values. Protecting animals is the right thing to do. That's why there are laws against harming animals. However, governments are in bed with the meat and dairy industry, taking profits from tax revenues. This is all blood money. The production you're about to watch may challenge everything you've been told about the animal use industry. You may have taken steps to reduce your use of animal products, that's commendable, but we all have a long way to go. First off, I want to preemptively say that just because I'm vegan, that doesn't mean that I think that people that aren't vegan are bad people at all. You know, who am I to say that? I used to eat animals more than probably anyone else here, okay? And I just come out of gangs, I was using drugs. I, I'm the last person to act superior to anyone. So there's no animosity in my heart or judgment. But what I say might make you feel a bit uncomfortable as well, because the truth is uncomfortable to face. It was the best thing I did was face the truth. I prefer myself to look at the, the truth authentically, how it is, and I speak the truth authentically too. But we kill around 70 billion land animals every year. They're just good people like us, man, just conditioned in the same world as we are, brainwashed from birth that, yep. you know, into the death cult, man, that yep. killing and eating animals, even though we don't need to, is totally fine. Agribusiness, animal and plant agriculture conducted for strictly commercial gain. If someone paid for someone else to be killed, who is guilty of the murder? Would you take part in violence against someone innocent? What if that violence was legal? If you can't stand to see animals suffer, you're a kind-hearted person. If you don't like seeing pictures of violence towards animals being posted, you need to help stop the violence, not the pictures. Johnny Depp. If you can't stand watching it be produced, you shouldn't be eating it. If your eyes can't take it, neither should your stomach. We kill billions of innocent animals, destroy rainforests, poison the environment, and sell you products that are killing you. Thanks for the support, meat and dairy industry. I used to argue against veganism. But then one day I woke up and realized that I was arguing against my own conscience. You see, you can't bribe your conscience. We share this magnificent planet with other living beings. The earth is for all beings, not just human beings. Man is not the only animal that seeks freedom in space. We share the desire to live, eat, and enjoy space in companionship. We all desire to be free. Animals that are held in captivity express immense joy and excitement when they're released, obviously. Humans can be incredibly compassionate and also tremendously selfish. Humans abuse their position by exploiting the weak and eating their corpses. Some humans hold no value for animal life.
We treat evil humans better than innocent animals. The extent of animal cruelty in the world is obscene and savagery. There are different levels of uh, cruelty against animals and some of the levels are actually psychopathic tendency where people have a lack of empathy towards animals. Obviously, cruelty against animals is unethical. In fact, we have laws against that. Yet, even laws that governments create are contradictory. Just because something is legal, it does not make it ethical. All meat-eating countries condition people to think that eating meat, eating animals, is normal. Eating anything with a face is not normal. No sensible person has to be convinced that animal cruelty is wrong. But when I learned that there's at least as much cruelty in dairy, in eggs, in leather, in, in all animal products really, I decided, well, am I against animal cruelty to some animals or all animals? But what is the, the cruelty part? Animal exploitation businesses kill billions of animals annually for human use, including food, clothing, consumer products, and industrial goods. Medical, psychological, pharmaceutical, and entertainment, including circuses, sports hunting, rodeos, and zoos. Animals are not commodities like products in a factory or store. The animal using industries are not charity that exist to improve our life and health. Businesses that profit off animals treat them as nothing more than cogs in the machinery of business. It's a barbaric and psychopathic industry. The raw truth is that the meat and dairy industry is run by psychopathic entrepreneurs who profit from abusing animals. The more you buy, the more they profit. Your health is not even on their radar. The only thing that's on their radar is the money in your pocket. It is an embarrassment to humankind that we permit this. This is going to be something we're going to be very ashamed of when we look back in history. Very ashamed of. Human race should be very ashamed of themselves. The US government annual spent to bombard the American public with meat and dairy campaigns is $557 million in addition to the $38 billion each year to subsidize the meat and dairy industries. To promote fruits and vegetables, they spend a mere $51 million and only $17 million to subsidize the industry. People collude with this atrocious industry by their consumer choices. Let's just be honest. If you buy it, you pay for this cruelty. The industry cuts costs just to provide consumers with cheap products. The animals pay for this cost-cutting with their blood. It's all just for profit. The attitude that humans have towards animals is hideous and contradictory. It needs to change, it needs to evolve. The next battle is for the liberation of animals, the voiceless victims of human greed and ignorance. As animal lovers, we should align our moral values with our actions. The sad truth is that the animal use industry don't want you to know what's going on behind closed doors. As they say, if you like sausages, don't watch how they're made. My name is Jenny. I'm a retired government employee, and I'm facing criminal charges for documenting animal abuse at a Canadian factory farm. When I investigated Adair Pork, I saw mother pigs with huge, painful prolapses where their organs were literally coming out of their bodies. I submitted formal complaints of this abuse to the Ontario government, but every report I made was ignored. Adair Pork supplies the international grocery giant IGA. The police refused to prosecute this powerful corporation. Now they're going after me instead. Earlier this month, the police raided my home and charged me with breaking and entering for my investigation. They woke me up by shining flashlights in my bedroom window. They took my computer, my cell phone and my camera. They're protecting a billion dollar industry by keeping its crimes hidden from the public. But I won't stop sharing the truth. I worked for the Ontario government for over a decade because I believe in serving the public good. 
and the public has a right to know what's happening to these animals. The meat and dairy industry is an epic modern scam that is economical with the truth. The livestock industry behaves as if farm animals are machines for food production and completely ignore their innocent and sentient nature. They battle viciously to conceal this reality from the masses to protect the industry's reputation. The industry is petrifying that the public will come to know the full extent of their hideous practices. Laws exist that forbid publishing videos of farm conditions taken as part of undercover operations. It's a felony punishable by years in prison. It's a powerful industry built on secrecy. Uproar tonight over what animal advocates call the ag gag bill. Lawmakers again trying to make it a crime to photograph or videotape farms in America. Why? Animal advocates ask, what is the factory farming industry trying to hide about the way animals are treated on farms? I think what it really reflects is that the biggest threat to business as usual for it any corporation in any industry is an informed public. Jane, these investigations are happening throughout the country at factory farms documenting the fact that millions of animals who we raise and kill for food in our country each year are treated in ways that are simply horrific. And the meat industry's response to these undercover whistleblowing exposés has not been to try to prevent the abuse that the animals are enduring, but rather to try to prevent the American people simply from finding out about that abuse in the first place by trying to make it a crime simply to take a photo or a video of what happens to animals within the agribusiness industry. You have to ask yourself, just what is the meat industry trying to hide. I think what Utah shows is the importance of fighting them tooth and nail and exposing what's actually happening. And when that, once that happens, the public overwhelmingly opposes them. You're seeing a real clash between those who want to protect animals from the cruelty that is so endemic throughout the meat industry and those who not only don't want to prevent this cruelty, but who are actively seeking to keep the public in the dark because they know that the more Americans learn about the routine ways in which farm animals are abused in America, the greater the outrage will be. Well, let's talk about the other caveat to this. Uh, the owner of that meatpacking factory was actually the mayor of this Utah town. He is currently. So isn't that a conflict of interest? Absolutely, but it's the same conflict of interest we're seeing around the country. In Iowa, the very first ag-gag law that was passed in the last legislative session, the sponsors all had close ties to the agriculture industry. Sure, you have to ask yourself, what is the meat industry trying to hide? And we know the answer to that. This is an industry that routinely confines millions of animals inside of cages that are so cramped the animals can barely move an inch their entire lives. When it comes to animal cruelty in the meat industry, we're not just talking about a couple rotten apples in an industry, we're talking about standard industry practices that are so inhumane they are simply rotten. In terms of marketing tactics, the meat industry today is not all that different from the tobacco industry in the 1950s. One of their standard operating procedures is to commission favorable scientific studies or to dig up independent studies that even vaguely support their bloody business. They then use their financial resources to promote these studies widely through the media. Repeat a lie a few hundred times and it becomes a valid point of view. Repeat it a million times and you'll have yourself an irrefutable fact. It is astonishing that tobacco used to be advertised and promoted as something healthy. Even doctors used to do it. But now we have the evidence that it is deadly and we are reaping the cost of false advertising and senseless practices for profit. Before you read another health study, check who's funding the research. Evidence has emerged that food companies have a bad history of footing the bill for research that is spun into pseudoscience-based PR to fatten their wallets. Specialist companies can be hired to plant doubt in people's minds through strategic marketing. Millions are invested in this practice. Biased industry funding of nutrition research and propaganda is more common than consumers may realize. It's identical to how the tobacco industry once funded research to uncover the health benefits of smoking. The meat and dairy industry is hemorrhaging heavily because people are awakening to what's happening. Do you not think that they will use their vast resources to preserve their massive profits? Don't be fooled. It's all about profits, not about animal welfare, and certainly not about your health. TV advertisements and product packaging show this romanticized depictions of happy cows and laughing chickens living this idyllic lifestyle on green pastures. Happy eggs, the image, but this is the unhappy reality.
Happy eggs are produced by Britain's biggest egg supplier, Noble Foods. It's advertised as high welfare, monitored by the RSPCA Freedom Food Scheme and sold in most supermarkets. The Happy Egg Company, where happy hens lay tasty eggs. They blatantly bend the truth to mislead the public. They show you one thing, but the truth is something totally different. Information in articles is so often presented in a, such a misleading way. Fortunately, the information age makes it a challenge to hoodwink people any longer. They just want to feather their nest. If someone lies to you, they don't respect you. Why give them your money? The dairy industry has done an amazing marketing campaign to convince people that you need to drink cow's milk to get healthy bones and to consume and receive calcium. What they don't tell you is that eating greens and beans are a great source of calcium. But unlike milk, cow's milk, plant-based calcium sources contain vitamin C and K and the minerals potassium and magnesium, which are all important for bone health. Many other lies are propagated as fact like we need meat to get protein. Protein is available from non-meat and dairy sources. In 2015, New York University nutrition professor Marion Nessel began tracking studies funded by food and beverage companies, as well as trade groups. Her research uncovered 168 such studies in that year alone, and of those, 156 showed biased results that favored the sponsor's interests. A 2007 review of 206 studies that looked at the health benefits of milk, soda, and fruit juices found that those sponsored entirely by a food or beverage company were four to eight times more likely to show positive health effects from consuming those products. Is it really true that food companies deliberately set out to manipulate research in their favor? Yes, it is. And the practice continues. Marion Nessel. In 2014, the dairy industry funded research claiming dairy is so good for us, we must keep consuming cow's milk to grow big and strong. The scientific value of the study is questionable. The research suggested cow's milk is essential for obtaining vitamin D. The problem was that vitamin D isn't even naturally found in milk. It's artificially added to milk. The best source of vitamin D is a good dose of sunshine. Failing that, we all get vitamin D from the same place, supplements. There's no need to obtain those supplements via cow's milk. As reported by Beth Mole, the study's lead author, Jonathan McGuire, has a long history of both receiving money from the dairy industry and of publishing studies with unsubstantiated conclusions that are favorable to the dairy industry. McGuire claimed to have only received a small grant of about $10,000 about 10 years ago. But this isn't true. In fact, in recent years, he's received $90,000 from the Dairy Farmers of Canada and an undisclosed amount from the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Among other documented financial ties, this matters financial sponsorship is well documented to influence study outcomes. A 2015 study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition examined the positive effect of high-fat cheese and high-fat meat on cholesterol. It found that diets with meat and cheese as the primary source of saturated fat caused higher levels of so-called good cholesterol compared to a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. The study was fully funded by the dairy industry, including the Dairy Research Institute and the Danish Dairy Research Foundation. A study on high school football players who drank chocolate milk showed superior cognitive testing after concussive events compared to players who didn't drink chocolate milk. This particular study was funded by the dairy industry. The university that conducted the study stated that people should not rely on results of their study, but the dairy industry irresponsibly used it as a PR tactic. A 2011 study funded by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association found no association between red meat consumption and cholesterol cancer. Dozens of studies show otherwise. The World Health Organization even released a report that declared a definitive link between red and processed meats and cancer. The Physicians Committee filed a lawsuit against the United States Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health and Human Services. Some members came from institutions that were funded by the egg industry and relied on egg industry funded research findings. Despite the fact that eggs are the leading source of cholesterol in the American diet and that cholesterol is linked to heart disease, the nation's leading killer. The committee announced that cholesterol was no longer a nutrient of concern. This after decades of releasing reports containing cholesterol warnings. The meat and dairy's health claims are not only deceitful, they are total hogwash. In fact, 
they are dangerous. It's all about profit, money talks, it's blood money. The next time you read an anti-vegan or pro-meat and dairy article, beware. It's most likely funded by blood money. Is it not obvious that they would use the mighty dollar to protect their profits? People have been marketed to death. Don't buy the hype. The real cost of dairy extends beyond the shelf. Who actually wants to work in a slaughterhouse? The mental trauma that these workers go through is tremendous. Working in a slaughterhouse is a vision of hell. The abuse and torture does not come primarily from rogue employees violating company procedures. Instead, the cruelty is inherent in the procedures themselves. Echoes of piercing screams can be heard. Workers at slaughterhouses become traumatized, callous, and desensitized, resulting in high rates of depression, suicide, domestic violence, and crime. It's often not an occupation undertaken by choice. Most of the people were like me. They didn't want to be there, but had no other option. People need a roof over their head and food to eat. The one thing that stuck, the one thing that you can never really understand unless you've been there, is the smell. The blood. Such an acrid, thick scent. It feels like it physically travels inside your nose and stays there. The fear has its own scent. It's not something I could put into words, but even now I would recognize it. Down in the blood pit, they say that the smell of blood makes you aggressive. And it does. You get an attitude that if that hog kicks me, I'm going to get eaten. You're already going to kill the hog, but that's not enough. It has to suffer. When you get a live one, you think, oh good, I'm going to beat this sucker. Slaughterhouse workers perform a job that, by its very nature, puts them at risk of psychological disorder and pathological sadism. The workers who are most acutely in danger are those who slit the throats of animals. Scientific studies have measured how violence affects slaughterhouse workers' mental health and behavior. One prominent study investigated the impact of having a slaughterhouse in a community. The study looked at how crime rates change as new industries came to town. They took data for over 500 countries between 1994 and 2002, and then compared slaughterhouses' effects on crime to that of other industries. Slaughterhouses exceeded all others in increasing crime. They led not only to a larger increase in overall crime, but disturbingly, disproportionately, increases in violent crime and sexual crime. One worker claimed working at a long shift slaughtering livestock affected how he viewed and treated his co-workers. I've had ideas of hanging my foreman upside down on the line and sticking him. I remember going into the office and telling the personnel man, I have no problem pulling the trigger on a person. If you get in my face, I'll blow you away. Working at slaughterhouses can desensitize workers to further violence that came to humans. Often a coping mechanism known as doubling kicks in where individuals are compelled to create dual selves, one good, one bad, to deal with this ethically dubious occupation. Living with the knowledge of their actions causes symptoms similar to those of individuals who are recipients of trauma, substance abuse, anxiety issues, depression, and disassociation from reality. It gets to a point where you're at a daydream stage where you can think about everything else and still do your job. You become emotionally dead, so a lot of guys at Morel just drink and drug their problems away. Some of them end up abusing their spouses because they can't get rid of the feelings. They leave work with this attitude and they go down to the bar to forget. The evil of slaughterhouse labor exists only because humans have an infatuation with meat and dairy. Would you work in a slaughterhouse? If not, why not? You may be offended by the clips we're about to show, but the animals are not offended by the fact we're showing them. To feed the global population with meat and dairy requires animal slaughter on an industrial scale. 20 cows happily roaming a field is grossly insufficient. Latest figures indicate up to 56 billion land animals and 90 billion marine animals are slaughtered for human consumption. Each year, approximately 900 million never even make it to the slaughterhouse. These animals die prematurely because of stress, disease, handling, transportation, and deprivation. Each year in the UK alone, more than 900 million animals are slaughtered for food. That's about 2.5 million animals killed every day. 100,000 an hour, 1,700 per minute, and 30 every second. This figure doesn't include fish, who are killed in such vast numbers that they are counted in tons. It's truly an animal holocaust. If animal slaughterhouses were filled with humans instead of helpless doomed animals, 
It would recreate the Auschwitz concentration camps where millions of Jews were brutally murdered. To some animals, all humans are Nazis. The word Holocaust is wrongly assumed to only refer to Nazi atrocities during World War II. Holocaust and the Holocaust have separate meanings. The lowercase word Holocaust describes the violent deaths of large groups. No group or event owns the word. The word was used by Winston Churchill and others to refer to the genocide of Armenians during World War I. In 1933, the word Holocaust was associated with the Nazis. By the 1960s, according to the Jewish magazine, it became common to refer to the Nazi genocide of Jews as the Holocaust. Socially sanctioned and legally protected conduct is not automatically ethical. Everything Hitler did was legal in Germany. Sometimes the law and social ethics have not caught up with rational and reasonable ethics. The magnitude of the modern animal holocaust is a stain on human history. Did you know that Hitler modeled the Jewish holocaust after the meat industry? You're demanding these animal products to be on your plate, and they're supplying it by running the holocaust, and you're keeping it in business by consuming animal products, so you're supporting the holocaust. How cool is that? Uh, that's pretty cool. This holocaust is actually worse. I'm offended that we compare human holocaust to the animal holocaust, which is the biggest holocaust in the history of humankind. If you went to the nearest cow or chicken slaughterhouse and remove the animals and replace them with Jews, you have now recreated Auschwitz. There's no difference. You have a building that exists to dismantle, to torment, to torture and murder innocent beings. Let's play a time game, war, a time warp game. Let's go back 60, 70 years. You go back to Auschwitz or you go back to Birkenau, you remove the Jews and replace them with cows and chickens. You still have a Holocaust taking place. This, in fact, we learned how to kill Jews in the Holocaust, the Nazis did, because they studied what the meat industry was doing. And just so you know, all the concentration camps did have animal slaughterhouses there too. And when the Allied forces came in to rescue the Jews and the gypsies, they left the animals behind. This is why I talk, call this the world's largest and longest running Holocaust. The animal Holocaust was happening long before the Jewish Holocaust, during the Jewish Holocaust, and it's still happening today. So as many of you know, uh, I spent my childhood years in the Warsaw Ghetto, where uh, my, and almost my entire family was murdered along with uh, about 350,000 other Polish Jews. And uh, people sometimes uh, will ask me whether that experience had anything to do with my work for animals. It didn't have a little to do with my work for animals. It had everything to do with my work for animals. What do they all know, all these scholars? All these philosophers, all the leaders of the world, they are convinced themselves that man, the worst transgressor of all the species, is the crown of creation. All the other creatures were created merely to provide him with food, pelts, to be tormented, exterminated. In relation to them, all people are Nazis. For the animals, it is an eternal Treblinka. I totally embrace the comparison to the Holocaust. I believe the abuse of animals, humans and the earth comes from the same need to dominate others. After knowing what I know about the Holocaust and about animal exploitation, I cannot be anything but an animal rights advocate. When I see cages crammed with chickens from battery farms thrown on trucks like bundles of trash, I see with the eyes of my soul the Amschleplatz. When I go to a restaurant and I see people devouring meat, I feel sick. I see a Holocaust on their plates. I have really been haunted by Holocaust images my whole life and there is no question but that I was drawn to animal rights in part because of similarities I sensed between institutionalized animal exploitation and the Nazi genocide. I refuse to eat animals because I cannot nourish myself by the suffering and by the death of other creatures. I refuse to do so because I suffered so painfully myself that I can feel the pains of others by recalling my own suffering. If slaughterhouses had glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. Paul McCartney. 
If you were an animal in a slaughterhouse and you could talk, would you beg for mercy? Animals are the main victims of history, and the treatment of domesticated animals in industrial farms is perhaps the worst crime in history. The Guardian newspaper, UK. If animals in slaughterhouses could talk, what do you think they would say? If you worked in a slaughterhouse and an animal spoke to you and begged you for mercy, what would you do in response? Animals are not ingredients. Barbara Thompson. If I was about to kill a pig in front of you, in, in front of your eyes, how would you respond? My body will not be a tomb for other creatures. Leonardo da Vinci. Where does our food come from? Ideal human food is grown, not born. The optimal amount of animal products in human diet is zero. During the past 30 years, I have been stepping across the line that humans draw to separate us from other animals. I hear their screams and witness their fear and suffering in hundreds of places, including slaughterhouses, industrialized farms, darkened sheds, open paddocks, feedlots, and inside transport trucks, ships on four continents. There was nothing humane on their side of the line. The animal use industry converts sentient beings into units of production and then genetically modifies them to increase profits. They are bred for slaughter. Instead of feeding us real food, they feed us lies. Have you ever wondered why you even eat meat and dairy? Animals are treated like ingredients. Dogs, crabs, cats, lobsters are boiled alive. Fishes and octopuses are eaten alive. Slaughterhouses are hell holes. <laughs> Think about this as you're tucking into a roast. You didn't hear the tortured scream of those animals. You didn't see them fight with every ounce of their strength to stay alive. You didn't clean their blood from the factory floor. I did, and the guilt will haunt me forever. Most people disconnect the food that's on their plate from the animals that were abused to create that food. We have to see those things on our plate, that the products on our plate, as once living beings with a will to live. Consuming meat and dairy is not victimless. Milk comes from a grieving parent. Meat comes from a being that once screamed in pain. I've been inside numerous abattoirs and watched the killing. No horror movie or graphic video can begin to compare to what these animals go through. Their terror, fear, and panic upon entering these industrial killing houses, that reek of spilled blood, is mind-numbing. Some of the animals go into a trance while others scream, kick, and fight all the way to their death. The non-stop violence in our midst may be out of our sight, but it is overwhelmingly unjust, unacceptable, and must be stopped. Most people would not eat animals if they had to kill them themselves. Instead, they conveniently pay others to do the dirty work. These animals know what's coming, and believe me, they fight against death with every fiber of their being. I couldn't possibly think about the living, breathing individual in front of me. I just had to do my hours and get out. The deck is stacked against the animals. It's a fight they will never, ever win. Most people cannot bear the sight of an animal suffering. That's why the industry locates these customized torture and death chambers in discreet locations. So the masses keep eating meat, out of sight, out of mind. There is a reason why the meat and dairy industry does not want you to see the footage and why some governments have outlawed filming in slaughterhouses. The footage will make your stomach churn and destroy their literal cash cow. There is no such thing as humane slaughter. It's an oxymoron. I just recently read this story about this Nazi. His name was Ernst Goebbels. He and his men were executing children one day, but he didn't like the way his guards were grabbing kids by their hair before they shot him in the back of the head and tossed him in a mass grave. He actually ordered his men to stop grabbing the kids by their hair. And I quote, kill them in a more decent way. That story sickens me as much as the stories that meat, cheese, milk, and egg eaters love to tell. Hey, Gary, I only eat free-range freedom eggs. Hey, Gary, I only eat animals who were raised and killed humanely on a cage-free 
organic farm. There is no such thing as humane when it comes to meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. Humane slaughter, humane rape, humane slavery, humane holocaust do not exist. How do you kill someone humanely if they don't want to die? <laughs> If you want to test what's humane, ask if you'd like it done to you. Would you swap places with a cow in the dairy industry? If you think it's a good life, go for it. Live their good life. Then let's send you to the slaughterhouse. Then let's see if you agree with it. Calling it humane slaughter just eases your conscience. When you watch footage of animals being slaughtered in slaughterhouses, ask yourself who is paying for it. Terminology like humane, compassionate, cruelty-free, cage-free, free-range, pasture-raised, organic, or animal-friendly is meaningless marketing, jargon designed to mislead the public. Farmed animals experience electric prodding, tail clipping, teeth cutting, and castration without anesthesia, throat slitting, boiled alive to remove hair, electrocution, and gassing. These barbaric methods are standard in many slaughterhouses and legally considered humane. The brutal slaughter process attempts to render the animal unconscious before they are killed, leaving the heart beating in order to push out the blood forcefully. In the United States, the number of federal anti-cruelty laws that protect farmed animals during their lifetime is zero. Animals used in the meat, dairy, and egg industries are just babies unnaturally bulked up with food and drugs. They live out a tiny fraction of their natural lifespan. They witness others unnecessarily tortured and slaughtered and know what's coming. Their eyes are bursting with terror. The animal use industry are literally milking their cash cow. Disturbing video footage captured on a Cambodian farm shows mutant pigs bred to grow to enormous sizes to get the pig farmers the most bang for their buck. These genetically altered pigs develop abnormally large muscles and they are sold and so too is their sperm. It all started back in 2015 when scientists used genetic engineering to create 32 double muscle piglets. Most of the pigs died, and according to reports, only one was considered even marginally healthy. Millions of sows are artificially kept pregnant in a cycle of pregnancies and births, until their fertility declines and they become of little commercial value, at which point they are slaughtered and turn into meat. This is standard globally. They are frequently legal and illegally transported without food or water, leaving them frothing at the mouth from dehydration. <laughs> One of the most heinous industry-wide practices is gestational crating. Pigs are forced into a crate made of iron bars in the exact length and width of their bodies. Locked in these prisons their entire lives, they can do nothing except stand on concrete floors, barely able to move an inch unable to turn around and never to experience the outdoors. Desperate to escape their tiny crates, the pigs often spend weeks trying to bite through the iron bars until their gums gush blood. They bash their heads against the walls with sheer boredom and anxiety. The physical trauma of attempting to escape results in organ torsion, a disease that causes their organs to become mangled in the wrong places. This practice is considered so cruel that in 2012 it was banned by the European Union and in 2014 Canada banned it too. In the U.S. states where factory farms actively thrive, these harsh devices continue to be widely used. Pigs are stunned and shackled before having the blood vessels in their throat cut, resulting in death by bleeding. An electric current is applied by electroid tongs placed on either side of the brain to induce a state of immediate epilepsy in the brain, making the animal unconscious. However, a survey of pig slaughtering procedures was carried out in the UK found that a significant percentage of the tong applications failed to stun the pig adequately, resulting in pigs regaining consciousness during bleeding or before throat slitting. Most pigs, including those raised as free range, are killed in carbon dioxide gas chambers, which are regarded as best practice. The industry tells the public that gas chambers are a humane slaughtering method and wants us to believe that the pigs gently fall asleep. 
However, nothing could be further from the truth. This method has been strongly criticized by scientists as inhumane, causing pigs to suffer from breathlessness and hyperventilation. Pigs are mechanically herded into gas cages filled with an explosion of screams from pigs kicking out and panicking when they are lowered into CO2 pits to satisfy meat eaters. When carbon dioxide reacts with liquids or mucus coated membranes like that of the eyes, nostrils, sinuses, throat and lungs, it forms carbonic acid. From their first lungful of gas, these pigs are burning from the inside out. As one cage is brought to the surface, another is lowered into the pit, and the cycle of violently gasping, throwing their heads around, and squealing continues. All right, here we are at the front of Lindley Valley Pork. The gas chambers are just there. They're, they're, they get lowered into the gas. Why do they scream? There's no noise when they go into the gas stomach. Typical slaughterhouse kills about 1,000 hogs per hour. The sheer number of animals killed makes it impossible for pig deaths to be humane and painless. Because of improper stunning, many hogs are alive when they reach the scalding hot water baths, which are intended to soften their skin and remove their hair. Stabbed in their necks and then left to thrash around and slowly die in their own blood. At this facility, a child was encouraged to watch and then to participate in the bloodbath. With a large blade, he stabs a pig, completely missing the animal's heart. The pig thrashes and struggles in pain before a worker violently bludgeons ear to death with a metal pipe. He then moves on to bludgeon and stab other animals. Here, Frightened pigs are hoisted into the air and stabbed in the throat. They squeal and squirm as they slowly bleed to death. Their bodies are then dunked into scalding tanks. I watched in horror as some of the animals thrashed around, still alive, in the near boiling hot water. All of this was done by government employees and up in front of government inspectors. It's illegal to advertise that eggs pack a nutritional wallop or that they have a high nutritional content. U.S. Department of Agriculture warned the egg industry that saying eggs are nutritious or safe may violate rules against false and misleading advertising. 
Do not be fooled. All they want is your money. Hens in the wild lay approximately 12 eggs per year. Today, hens are forced to lay eggs at a breakneck pace. Chickens bred for meat are arguably the most genetically manipulated of all animals. Forced to grow 65 times faster than their bodies normally would, they grow so large so quickly that their legs can't keep up with the size of their massive bodies. This causes them to suffer from painful bone and joint conditions. The rate of egg laying has been intensified largely through aggressive genetic modification and the manipulation of light during which the hens are starved for 10 to 14 days and the coop is darkened. The consequences of such modern egg laying factories are catastrophic for the hens and include injured ovipositors and accelerated aging, resulting in slaughter at a young age, usually 4 to 5 years. A chicken's normal lifespan is 10 to 15 years. Commercial laying hens develop ovarian cancer at a higher rate. Medical researchers have used hens as models for studies into ovarian cancer in humans. Chicks are born in large incubators. They will never see their mothers. Shortly after birth, the males and females are separated. The females head to a life in the egg industry, and the unwanted day-old males are either tossed into trash bags to suffocate or funneled by a conveyor belt into a macerator to be ground up live. If you were the one who had to push the button to turn on the grinding machine, would you do it? because you are doing it every time you pay for eggs. There's no such thing as humane eggs. The female chicks have the ends of their beaks cut off with a hot blade. Often de-beaking with blunt blades and sloppy execution causes serious injury to the birds. Five to 11 hens are crammed into tiny wire battery cages. The cages are often stacked on top of one another, which allows urine and feces to fall down onto birds in lower cages. Chickens are housed in giant overcrowded sheds where they are packed in by the thousands and forced to stand and sit on filthy, manure-laden flooring, which is typically only cleaned out every two to four years. After six weeks, terrified chickens are grabbed by their feet and roughly stuffed in the crates. Chicken crating machines vacuum up 7,000 birds an hour into crates. In the process, they suffer from broken legs, wings, lacerations, hemorrhaging, dehydration, heat stroke, hypothermia, amputation, suffocation, bacterial infections, and heart failure. Millions die before even reaching the murder factories. After a short but cruel life, they are shackled and hung upside down, electrocuted, have their throats cut, and they're often scalded to death. Former slaughterhouse worker Virgil Butler reports that in the skull tank, the chickens scream, kick, and their eyeballs pop out of their heads. Nearly 300 chickens are slaughtered in the U.S. each second. 51.4 billion chickens are artificially hatched, fattened up, and slaughtered as 42-day-old babies every year globally. So-called humane slaughter alternatives include the kill cone, decompression and gas chambers. The kill cone is the most barbaric form of killing imaginable. Chickens are stuffed headfirst down a long funnel. Their heads are pulled through a small opening and the necks are slashed as they thrash and scream in agony and blood flows out of their mouths. This is the cost of your chicken sandwich. Now that you know, how will you respond? <laughs> Most people are really surprised to learn that the dairy industry is much crueler than they were aware of. This business is all about milk. To get cows to produce it, they need to have calves. But in the vast majority of dairy farms, those calves are then taken away from their mums at just a few days old so that we can drink the milk. When you take a calf away from its mum, what is that process like for the calf, for the mum, for the farmer? Well, it, it's something you, as a farmer, it's something you just do, you get on with it. It's part of the job and uh, you need to take the calf away because you need the milk. The calf <coughs> at that point, of course, knows no better other than its instinct tells them something is a bit funny, a bit odd. Um, the mother, well, it varied. Some, sometimes they just walked over to the silage feed science and started eating and he thought um, they haven't even noticed. Um, and then there's others that would um, bowl for days. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And, and that was probably the distressing side of it. That affected you, it affects you now talking about it. Cut. <laughs> the human body has no more need for cow's milk than it does for dog's milk, horse's milk, or giraffe's milk. 
Every glass of milk has a painful history. It's weird to drink cow's milk. We are the only species that really goes out of its way to drink the milk of another species. Milk is for infants. Intelligent adults drinking milk is bizarre. And the fact is, dairy products have been linked to a whole list of health problems. The UK permits milk to contain millions of pus cells before it's considered unsafe to drink. As the dairy industry points out, the accumulation of pus is a natural part of an animal's defense system. So pus itself isn't a bad thing. We just may not want to have it in our mouth. The dairy industry is incredibly cruel. Cows are painfully branded, used, abused, and slaughtered. A controversial Milk is Inhumane advert was approved by the strict UK Advertising Standards Authority despite a dairy industry outcry. Humane milk is a lie. A cow cannot produce milk unless she gives birth, so they endure uninterrupted repeating cycles of artificial insemination, pregnancy, and birth, and mechanized milking. Every time you drink a glass of milk or eat a piece of cheese, you harm a mother. Forcefully impregnating a female against her will is rape. The device used in the industry is suitably referred to as a rape rack, more so by animal activists these days. When a calf is born, it is cruelly taken away from its mother within 24 hours of birth. Just when the maternal relationship is most craved by mother and newborn, this causes profound distress to both the mother and her newborn. They try to make you believe that there's these perfect farms where no harm is done to animals. As if slaving an animal, raping her, stealing her calf, stealing her milk, then when she's worn out, send her to a brutal death. All for filthy profit. Imagine this being done to human females. You can't imagine it, right? The unimaginable is endured by cows as if it's ethically acceptable. They tell you that cows reject their calf and kind Mr. and Mrs. Farmer have to step in and rescue that calf. The truth is, the mothers, still bloody from birth, will search and call frantically for their babies. And after experiencing this repeatedly, they just give up because they know what's going to happen to their calf. They're not just abandoning it. Female calves are destined to suffer the same fate as their mothers. They are imprisoned in solitary confinement for months until they're sent to replace their mothers as profit-making milk machines. Male calves lack the ability to produce milk and thus viewed as a liability and so are sent for slaughter to become cheap veal on supermarket shelves. When you pay for veal, you're paying for the separation of a calf from its mother. You are paying for a baby to be imprisoned in a tiny cage, prevented from walking, running, jumping, nursing and just enjoying its life. Are you okay with this? Cows are enslaved all day long with little or no exercise. Some collapse from exhaustion. The mother cow is forcefully milked until she can give no more milk. These cows are genetically manipulated to produce about 10 times as much milk as they would naturally, thus spending their lives constantly bloated and in pain. Unnaturally high milk yield has doubled due to selective genetic breeding and the intensification of herd management. In the 1970s, the average was 12 liters or 21 pints per day. In 2012, the average was 24.5 liters or 42 pints per day. The cruel cycle of rape and milking causes excessive metabolic drain and overburdens the cows until the cow becomes frail and profitability drops. Then she is sent to be slaughtered for meat. Typically they survive four or five years, whereas under less stressful conditions, their natural lifespan is up to 25 years. Big Bertha is the oldest cow on record who lived to a ripe old age, dying just three months short of her 49th birthday. Cows are transported while being forced to stand in excrement for hours or days. Their bodies become coated with excrement. The trucks never stop to give them the dignity of being cleaned. They are forced to breathe the ammonia fumes from excrement and sometimes collapse from the whole experience or slip on the excrement. This one can't even get up. She's sitting in her own filth. Sitting in her own filth, caked in her own manure. I've never seen something this horrific. I've never seen filth so pronounced, so horrific, so disrespectful absolutely caked in her own filth, traveling for hours or days in their own filth. The gentle, gentle giants, the most gentle animals ever, just left to rot in their own filth. They are often injured as they are tossed about in steel trucks, speeding to death, broken legs, flesh is torn open, gushing blood from their wounds, all while their bodies are mired in excrement. Cows on organic farms can suffer even more. When the animal's udders become infected, Many farmers will not administer medicine, as that would prevent them from labeling the cow's milk as organic. 
Don't fall for labels such as cage-free, grass-fed, ethically sourced. These are marketing jargon to ease your conscience and increase prices. The animals are still slaughtered using the same cruel methods. The two leading causes of dairy cow mortality in the United States are lameness and utter infections. Animals pay a hefty price for your milk, your cheese, your yogurt, your ice cream. They pay with their life in blooded slaughterhouses that you would hate to visit. Cows grazing in a field and chickens running around on a farm cannot sustain the amount of meat that is required to meet the demand. Industrial scale farming is the cruel solution. All this suffering just so humans can drink milk that they have no need to drink. We must stop funding this barbaric industry and you can do this by boycotting meat and dairy products. Um, sometimes these calves are killed on their first day of life, they're, they're just hit with a sledgehammer on their head and that is humane dairy standard but otherwise they're grown for a little while, kept in these cages um, away from their mothers. The mothers are only you know, a stone's throw away from them so this is just the reality of drinking milk, eating cheese, eating chocolate. Luckily we have vegan versions of all these dairy products and this senseless violence and suffering and kidnap doesn't have to happen. As cruelty in the animal farming industry is being exposed, the number of farms and the demand for animal products is declining. The UK Telegraph newspaper reported that thousands of dairy farms face closure as deaths reach crisis levels. Industry analysts anticipate the number will continue to drop. It's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. There are farmers who are either selling up or turning vegan. Jay Wild has been farming cows all his life. He made the incredible gesture of donating a herd of 59 cows to a vegan sanctuary, and the vegan society is helping him convert his farm to a vegan farm. Jay's story was documented on BBC One's Country Life. Other farmers have taken a similar route. Okay, though, if we don't find him, should we? Yeah. I mean, okay, it kind of works. Yeah. Hey, amigo. Nos muerte! Acero nos muerte. Ah! Frio! Fishes are like sponges. They soak up all the pollutants in the sea. Fishing is nothing more than a cruel blood sport. When fish are impaled on an angler's hook and yanked out of the water, it's not a game to them. They're scared, in pain, and fighting for their lives. Researchers in Scotland located 58 receptors in the face and head of rainbow trout. 22 of those were pain receptors in a fish's mouth and head, where an angler's barbed hook would penetrate a fish's flesh. In her book, Do Fish Feel Pain?, biologist Victoria Braithwaite says that there is as much evidence that fish feel pain and suffer as there is for birds and mammals. When Braithwaite and her colleagues exposed fish to irritating chemicals, the animals behaved as any of us might. When rainbow trout had painful acetic acid or bee venom injected into their sensitive lips, they stopped eating, rocked back and forth on the tank floor, and rubbed their lips against the tank's walls. Fish who were injected with a harmless saline solution didn't display this abnormal behavior. Fish don't audibly scream when they're impaled on hooks or grimace when the hooks are ripped from their mouths, but their behavior offers strong evidence of their suffering. Some screams are silent. 
Numerous studies by neurobiologists have long recognized that fish have nervous systems that comprehend and react to pain. Fish, like higher vertebrates, have neurotransmitters such as endorphins that relieve suffering. The obvious reason their nervous system produces painkillers is to alleviate pain. A study in the journal Applied Animal Behavior Science found that fish who were exposed to painful heat later show signs of fear and weariness, illustrating that fish both experience pain and can remember it. A study by scientists at Queen's University Belfast proved that fish learn to avoid pain, just like other animals. This paper shows that pain avoidance in fish doesn't seem to be a reflex response, rather one that is learned, remembered, and is changed according to different circumstances. Therefore, if fish can perceive pain, then angling cannot continue to be considered a non-cruel sport. Researchers at the University of Guelph in Canada concluded that fish feel fear when they are chased and that their behavior is more than simply a reflex. The head of the study stated, fish are frightened and they prefer not being frightened. Fish are able to detect and respond to noxious stimuli, and FAWC supports the increasing scientific consensus that they experience pain. Dr. Colin Brown of Macquarie University, who reviewed nearly 200 research papers on fish cognitive abilities and sensory perceptions, believes that the stress that fish experience when they're pulled from the water into an environment in which they cannot breathe may even exceed that of a human drowning. Unlike drowning in humans, where we die in about four to five minutes because we can't extract any oxygen from water, fish can go on for much longer. It's a prolonged slow death most of the time. It would be impossible for fish to survive as they cognitively and behaviorally complex animals they are without a capacity to feel pain, and the potential amount of cruelty that we humans inflict on fish is mind-boggling. It would be an unjustified error to assume that fish do not receive pain in these situations merely because their response did not match those traditionally seen in mammals subjugated to chronic pain. According to a study by the UK fish welfare organization fishcount.org, about 970 to 2,700 billion fish are caught from the wild annually. The debate is over. Fish feel pain. It's very interesting. I went to the wet markets, okay, and I've seen fish in captivity in small buckets suffocating, uh, slowly suffering, and it made me very distressed. The things I saw in there were horrific, and I can't believe I could see them, but not many other people actually see these fish in these little tanks suffocating, suffocating, and their silent screams. If you look in their eyes, they're, they're traumatized, they are suffering. It's senseless suffering. I've also seen uh, fish cut in half lengthways and their bodies exposed and their hearts were still beating.
Behind every beautiful fur coat, there is a story. It is a bloody, barbaric story. Behind every clothing from animal is an animal that suffered tremendously. Millions of animals are bludgeoned, hanged, bled to death, and often skinned alive for their fur. Fur coats are worn by beautiful animals and ugly people. Row upon row of cages stacked on top of each other in foul-smelling sheds that resound with the screams of distressed animals. This is a typical fur farm. The gruesome, painful, and terrifying methods used to kill animals on fur farms include vaginal or anal electrocution, gassing, and poisoning. I cannot forget the bewildered look on the trap raccoon's face as he is smacked in the head with a stick and then shoved under the water by the trapper's boot, only to re-emerge gasping for air and grasping the end of the stick with his tiny paws as if he was pleading for mercy. The World Bank has ranked the fur industry as one of the worst industries in the world for toxic metal pollution. The hazardous substances used to treat fur can cause devastating damage to water supplies. And they also pose serious health risks to workers in fur processing plants, ranging from skin maladies to cancer. Some countries hypocritically outlaw fur farming yet permit fur imports. It's all blood money. At the root of every fashion item made from leather, there is tremendous cruelty. In China, countless cows are skinned alive for the letter and to prevent these gentle creatures from escaping, their limbs are cut off. India is one of the biggest exporters of beef, yet cows are considered holy and no animal welfare regulators exist. Your made in Italy leather shoes may be made with Indian leather. Sheep farmers will tell you that sheep need to be sheared or they will suffer. What they fail to tell you is that these sheep have been genetically engineered to keep growing a never-ending supply of wool to increase profits. In the 13th and 14th centuries, Spanish sheep herders let their local sheep breed with English sheep. The result was the merino, a sheep that doesn't shed their wool. They are a nightmare that humans made. Wild sheep grow sufficient wool for themselves during cold seasons and shed it naturally during the warmer season. But humans found a way to profit from their wool, and domestic sheep suffer for it. About 25% of the world's wool comes from Australia. Young lambs' ears are often hole-punched, their tails are chopped off, and the males are castrated, all usually without anesthetics or pain relief. It is considered normal in the Australian wool industry for approximately 3 million young lambs to die every spring. In the industry's rush to produce more wool, many sheep die from exposure after premature shearing. An unnatural overload of wool also causes animals to die of heat exhaustion during hot months. During shearing, sheep can sustain anything from nicks to complete amputations of their udders, ears, penises, and other body parts. Eyewitnesses have seen shears punch sheep with their shears or their fists until the sheep's nose bleed. Others have witnessed sheep with half their faces shorn off. Sheep are crammed into crowded pens, and some may die because of injuries or stress. Sheep are so stoic, they quietly take it all. But researchers have found that stress hormones, such as cortisone, shot up during the shearing process. When sheep age and their wool production declines, they are sent to slaughter. Unwanted Australian sheep are shipped to the Middle East on crowded multi-level ships. These voyages, which can last weeks, go to countries where animal welfare standards are non-existent. Bound for the Middle East via Perth, the Beta 3 leaves Port Adelaide, packed with tens of thousands of live animals. Protesters say they're devastated as many on board will die during their journey. After more than a week of delays, the controversial live export carrier docked yesterday morning. It follows shocking vision exposed by 60 Minutes, showing Australian sheep distressed, dehydrated and dying during their five-week voyage to the Middle East. The footage amplifying calls from around the country for live exports to be banned. The state government says it remains supportive of the live export industry, which it claims creates around 400 local jobs and is worth $40 million. Don't allow profit merchants to pull the wool over your eyes. No amount of fluff can hide the fact that buying wool supports a cruel and bloody industry.
Animals in captivity exploited by circuses to entertain audience do not perform because they want to. They perform because they're afraid of what will happen if they don't. Often they're kept in horrendous, unnatural, and stressful environments. In many cases, in total isolation resulting in psychological problems. Common signs of this mental distress include swaying back and forward, head bobbing, pacing, and even self-mutilation. These animals will never experience anything that's natural and important to them, such as running, playing, jumping, or socializing with their mates. Most of them will never see their family again. Frustrated by years of beatings, bull hooks, and shackles, some of the animals attempt to escape, and this can become dangerous for the animal and for the public. In many circuses, the captive animals are made to breed and their young segregated immediately. These younger animals are easier to control and influence. In many countries, there is no government organization in charge of monitoring training methods. Animals are often beaten, resulting in them bleeding profusely and screaming in pain. Animals are also forced to perform when they are injured or sick. It is nothing more than a cruel prison profiteering from animals forced to entertain. As the demand for cruelty-free circuses increases, circuses will have to move towards having entertainment that doesn't include animals. For this to occur, the industry's bank balance needs to be hit. When you purchase a ticket to a circus exploiting animals, you are actively supporting cruelty to animals. The animal testing industry is a humongous waste of resources. Millions of mice, rats, rabbits, primates, cats, dogs, and other animals are locked inside burying cages and laboratories across the world. They languish in pain, suffer extreme frustration, ache from loneliness, and long to be free. They sit and wait and fear for their next terrifying and painful procedure that will be performed on them. Animals have not given consent to be tested on. Animal testing results in more farmer customers that should tell you something it's about profits. Animal tests include forcing animals to inhale toxic fumes, force feeding dogs pesticides, dripping or injecting corrosive and burning chemicals into sensitive eyes, legal poisoning, deprivation of food, water or sleep, subjection to skin or eye irritants, subjection to psychological distress, deliberately infecting them with diseases, subjection to brain damage and paralysis, surgical mutilation, irradiated, burned, gassed, force-fed, electrocuted, and most end up being killed. This happens to millions of animals every year. Even confused, distraught newborns are taken from their mothers and held down by experimenters. Humane non-animal test methods can replace animal testing, and they also have the potential to be cheaper, faster, and more relevant to humans. Dr. Francis Collins, director of the National Human Genome Research Institute, was asked to describe why new testing methods were preferable to using animals. Speaking about the use of animals for toxicity testing, he said, It is clearly quite expensive. It is time-consuming. It uses animals in large numbers, and it doesn't always predict which chemicals would be harmful to humans. The new research model would allow scientists to test 100,000 compounds in 1,500 different concentrations in about two days compared with years if the testing was done on animals. False claims to boost profits, such as this product is not tested on animals, can hide the fact that its ingredients are tested on animals and this company does not test on animals, may simply mean the company contracts out its testing to other companies. We can help prevent animal suffering and deaths by buying cruelty-free products and calling for an end to experimenting on animals. At the end of the day, zoos are animal prison businesses that regard animals as commodities. Animals are regularly bought, sold, and loaned. Animals are often prevented from doing most of the things that are natural and important to them, like running, roaming, flying, climbing, foraging, and choosing a partner. Instead, they are bored, cramped, lonely, and deprived. The physical and mental frustrations of captivity in unsuitable replica habitats often lead to abnormal, neurotic, and even self-destructive behavior, such as incessant pacing, walking in tight circles, swaying, head bobbing, bar biting, self-mutilation, and other signs of psychological distress. Many zoos operate at a loss and must find ways to cut costs. Animals end up paying the price. Breeding programs simply produce cute baby animals to attract zoo patrons and generate revenue. 
Overcrowding means older animals may be either warehoused behind the scenes, shuffled off by auctions or sailed to shabby roadside zoos, or on ethical exotic animal dealers. Even large, well-known and popular zoos engage in unscrupulous practices, such as dumping unwanted animals or taking animals from the wild. When you buy a ticket to this glorified animal prison, you pay for animal imprisonment and cruelty. The way conventional meat is produced today creates challenges for the environment, animal welfare, and human health. These are problems that everyone wants to solve. Relying on animal meat and dairy is unhealthy and unsustainable. As our planet changes, our habits must too. Everybody becomes an expert in nutrition when you tell them that you're vegan. Listen, we need to eat intelligently, instead of building slaughterhouses for animals and hospitals for us. The beef industry has contributed to more American deaths than all the wars of the century, all natural disasters, and all automobile accidents combined. If beef is your idea of real food for real people, you'd better live real close to a real good hospital. A study of 536,969 people reported in the British Medical Journal in 2017 states, the results show increased risks of mortality and death due to nine different causes associated with both processed and unprocessed red meat. Red meat refers to all types of mammalian muscle meat, such as beef, veal, pork, lamb, mutton, horse, and goat. Processed meat refers to meat that has been transformed through salting, curing, fermentation, smoking, or other processes to enhance flavor or improve preservation. The American Cancer Society lists processed meat under the category Group 1, meaning it is carcinogenic to humans. Red meat is listed in Group 2A, meaning probably carcinogenic to humans. Researchers at the National Cancer Institute have found that eating meat raises men's risk of prostate cancer, while a study from Yale University reports that meat-based diets can cause stomach cancer. A study of more than 90,000 women concluded that frequent consumption of bacon, hot dogs, and sausage was associated with an increased risk of diabetes. Scientists have also found that people who regularly eat hot dogs, sausage, or other processed or cured meats suffer from a 70% increase in pancreatic cancer rates. However, those pork products are on the daily menu of many children. According to another study, the children of pregnant women who consume cured meats on a daily basis run a substantial risk of growing a pediatric brain tumor. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, the Cancer Agency of the World Health Organization, appointed 22 experts from 10 countries to review more than 800 studies, and they classified processed meat as a carcinogen and red meat as a probable carcinogen. A carcinogen is a substance capable of causing cancer. They listed processed meat in Group 1, the same category as smoking and asbestos. They classified red meat as a probable carcinogen, something that probably causes cancer. This morning, a major new report from the World Health Organization says eating processed meat poses the same cancer risk as smoking. The report puts processed meat, such as bacon and hot dogs, at the highest risk rating. That is the same as cigarettes and alcohol. Red meat is called the next highest risk. Dr. David Agus is one of the world's leading cancer specialists and a CBS News medical contributor. He joins us from Los Angeles. So help us understand what red meat is and processed meat, because that's a critical distinction. Right, so red meat is, you know, you put a steak on the grill. Processed meats are where they take meat and they put in, whether it be lots of salt, preservatives, nitrates, and things to make it stay longer or taste differently. So bologna isn't a natural meat. Hot dogs aren't regular red meat, they're processed. And so we need to stay away from the processed. Obviously with the current environmental issues, it's unsustainable, the rate of which we're all eating red meat, but that's a separate issue. Every year, food poisoning sickens hundreds of millions of people and kills thousands of others. One study of 256 pork samples taken from 36 different grocery stores found that up to 63% of the samples were contaminated with bacteria. Hundreds of clinical studies in the past several decades showed that consumption of meat and dairy products is a major factor in causing cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and a host of other illnesses. Americans eat more meat per person than any other people on earth and paying the price in doctor bills. Thus, Americans have twice the obesity rate, twice the diabetes rate, and nearly three times the cancer rates as people in the rest of the world. The annual cost to treat U.S. cases of diseases related to meat and dairy consumption is $314 billion.
Leading health organizations worldwide recognize that a vegan diet is a viable option for everyone and acknowledges it has sufficient health benefits, including reducing incidence of obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart attacks, strokes, and some types of cancer. The American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the U.S. oldest, largest, and foremost authority on diet and nutrition, also recognizes that humans have no inherent biological requirement for animal products. It is the position of the American Dietetic Association that appropriately planned vegetarian diets, including total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, and adolescence, and for athletes. Consuming meat and dairy is actually detrimental to our health. 15 of the top 16 killer health issues are caused by meat and dairy consumption and all can be reversed by a healthy vegan diet. Studies show that a vegan diet can reverse health issues and type 2 diabetes as well. No study shows that meat eating does this. You see animals get their nutrients from vegetation, fruits and grains. Humans then consume the animals to obtain those nutrients. Why not just go direct to the source? Humans can get all the nutrients they need without consuming meat and dairy. Anyone who cares about the earth, really cares, must stop eating animals. Can someone claim to be concerned about the environment while unnecessarily contributing to one of the worst causes of environmental destruction? When we think about environmental threats, we picture cars and smokestacks, not the food on our plate. The fact is, our need for food poses one of the greatest dangers to the planet. Food, like water and air, is life. If you consider yourself an environmentalist and you take shorter showers, use cloth bags instead of using plastic bags, ride a bike, shop at farmer's market, recycle your clothing and use metal water bottles, then the single biggest thing you can do to reduce your carbon footprint than anything else is eliminating meat and dairy from your diet. A lot of land and energy is used to turn an animal into a steak on your plate. Farming animals, indoors or outdoors, is inefficient and stupendously wasteful. According to Environmental Defense, if every American skipped one meal of chicken per week and substituted vegan foods instead, the carbon dioxide savings would be equivalent to taking more than half a million cars off our roads. If everyone ate vegan one day a week, we'd also save one billion gallons of water, enough to supply all the homes in New England for almost four months. It would save 1.5 billion pounds of crops otherwise fed to livestock, enough to feed the state of New Mexico for more than a year, and 70 million gallons of gas, enough to fuel all the cars of Canada and Mexico combined, and then some. And that is just a single day. The meat and dairy industry is one of the most senseless, destructive ecological industries on this planet. Livestock or livestock feed now occupies over 30% of the Earth's entire ice-free land surface. Global animal agriculture has taken over a landmass the size of Africa. One to two acres of rainforest is being cleared every second. It takes almost 20 times less land to feed someone on a vegan diet than it does to feed a meat eater, since the crops are used directly. According to a 2006 UN report, a global shift towards a vegan diet is vital to save the world from hunger, fuel poverty, and the worst impacts of climate change. The report reveals that the livestock sector causes more greenhouse gases worldwide than the entire transportation sector, accounting for a staggering 65% of worldwide nitrous oxide emissions. The United Nations declared 2016 the year of the pulses, legumes and beans. Not only are they highly nutritious and versatile in the kitchen, but they provide benefits to farmers too. Lentils are nitrogen fixers that can replenish the soil. Raising cows, chickens or pigs does the opposite. It damages soil as well as air quality and water beyond repair, endangering communities for generations. Professor Edgar Hertwich, the lead author of the report said, animal products cause more damage than producing construction minerals such as sand or cement, plastics or metals. Biomass in crops for animals are as damaging as burning fossil fuels. The report states, a substantial reduction of impacts only be possible with a substantial worldwide diet change away from animal products. Many leading environmental organizations recognize that raising animals for food damages the environment more than just about anything else that we do. Even Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth did not mention 
that consuming meat and dairy is worse for the environment when all factors are combined than all emissions from the automotive industry. Yet in 2013, the environmentalist and former vice president announced he had switched to a vegan diet. It's absolutely correct that the growing meat intensity of diets around the world is one of the issues connected to this global crisis, not only because of the CO2 involved, but also because of the water consumed in the process. Other prominent environmentalists have seen the light and also ditched meat, dairy, and eggs. Factory farms produce massive amounts of dust and other contamination that pollutes our air, including biologically active organisms such as bacteria, mold, and fungi from the feces. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, the runoff from factory farms pollutes our waterways more than all other industrial sources combined. Since animals raised for food produce 130 times more excrement than the entire human population, 86,000 pounds per second. A typical pig factory farm generates a quantity of raw waste equal to that of a city of 12,000 people. Simply showering quicker is nonsensical when, according to some calculations, making one hamburger uses as much water as showering for two months. According to the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, it takes around 10 pounds of grain to produce just one pound of meat. Sufficient meat for one meal. 16 people could be fed on the grain it took to produce that pound of meat. The global population will increase dramatically by 2050. The foods we choose to eat in the coming decades will have dramatic ramifications for the planet. Hence, China plans to cut meat consumption by 50%, and other nations are taking action too. Every two seconds, a child starves to death somewhere in the world. Poverty-stricken countries use their farmland to supply the West with cheap animal flesh instead of farming crops for their own starving people. More than half of the world's crops are used to feed animals, not people. Animal agriculture is using grains that could be going to hungry people. The livestock population of the U.S. consumes enough grain and soybeans to feed more than five times its human population. 90% of all corn and 80% of all grains and beans grown in the U.S. are used to feed livestock animals. If all the grain currently fed to livestock in the United States were consumed directly by people, the number of people who could be fed would be nearly 800 million. If those grains were exported, it could boost the U.S. trade balance by 80 billion a year. More than half the U.S. grain and nearly 40% of the world grain is being fed to livestock rather than being consumed directly by humans. It's wasteful and irresponsible to squander our precious resources on a cruel luxury item like meat. Fortunately, there is something you can do. Switch to a plant-based diet. What's good for you is also good for animals and the planet. Richard Branson predicts the world will no longer need to kill animals in 30 years. Both Branson and Bill Gates have invested in clean meat startups that rid the need for animal slaughter by manufacturing lab-grown meat from self-producing animal cells. Memphis Meats, which produces beef, chicken, and duck directly from animal cells without raising and slaughtering livestock or poultry, raised $17 million from investors including Cargill, Gates, and billionaire Richard Branson. I'm thrilled to have invested in Memphis Meats. I believe that in 30 years or so, we will no longer need to kill any animals and that all meat will either be clean or plant-based, taste the same, and also be much healthier for everyone. Vegan meat is meat substitutes made from plants. It may sound like an oxymoron, but it's now the biggest trend in the tech industry. At the 2016 Milken Institute Global Conference in Los Angeles, Eric Schmidt, executive director of Alphabet, Google's parent company, listed plant-based proteins as the most important trend in tech, beating out 3D printing, self-driving cars, mobile medical data, virtual reality, and education programs. Schmidt predicts we're entering a revolution of replacing livestock with plant proteins. Technology is advancing research that makes for delicious and highly nutritious foods without the health and foodborne illnesses risks of animal products. It's even being used in growing meat without the animal. A lab-grown burger was tested in the UK to rave reviews. Beyond Meat, a Southern California plant-based meat company, recently released a veggie burger so meaty it's being sold in the meat case alongside animal products. On its first day in the store, it sold out in under an hour. Impossible Foods, which has raised more than $180 million, receiving an offer to sell to Google for $300 million, is committed to making a plant-based burger so meaty that even the most devoted carnivore wouldn't be able to distinguish it from beef. Just like Beyond Meat, Impossible Foods sees several benefits in simulating meat from plants. It's better for our bodies, for the planet, and most certainly for the animals. The future looks bright. The future looks vegan. The 
mass brutality is so painful to confront that many are enticed by the temptation to ignore thinking. Ignorance is bliss. The final argument of Carnus is crumbling and scientists realize that animal farming is unsustainable. It can be really hard to admit when someone has a better argument than you. We all make self-centered choices, not realizing that our choices have consequences. I tell you the truth, if non-human animals had a religion, humans would be Satan. Humans have a talent for deceiving themselves so they can do what they know deep down is wrong. Most people eat animals not because they have to or need to, but just because they can. Why should an animal lose their life just so you can have a snack or meal? People justify the abuse they refuse to watch. If you can't watch it being produced, you shouldn't be eating it. If it's not good enough for your eyes, why is it acceptable for your stomach? Future generations will look back and wonder how we permitted the monstrous atrocity of the mass incarceration of animals. One day we will look back and think how archaic our grandparents were in killing animals for food. The time will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look upon the murder of men. The hypocrisy is so rank that future generations will marvel at how we could have failed to see it. Challenging societal norms do not always seem reasonable at the time. Hindsight brings clarity and time uncovers lies. History has no place for lies. Hopefully, the human race will one day admit it is not acceptable to unnecessarily enslave, torture, steal from, and murder animals in the name of profit and satisfying taste buds. Just as smoking was once considered healthy by medical doctors, but now the packaging carries health warnings, so too meat packaging may one day carry a health warning, if not totally discarded as an unacceptable food. Unless you are in a survival situation, there are no ethical reasons for you to eat murdered meat except purely for personal pleasure. But that never stopped people before. Remember, your food screen. Eating meat in moderation or killing animals humanely is an option as much as smoking in moderation and raping humanely is sensible or acceptable. You can argue, but niggling doubts tell you this video presentation is the truth. A mind is like a parachute. It is only useful when open. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Since it's all about profit, we have to hit this vile industry in their pocket. It's a supply and demand industry. And my message to these industries is, if you live by the market, you risk dying by the market. Every choice you make as a consumer has consequences. Every time you purchase animal products, you are funding the births, enslavement, and violent deaths of innocent beings. Your indifference keeps this cycle going. How long will you continue pretending it does not matter? Killing an animal to eat when we have plenty of other options is inhumane. We could either bury our heads in the sand, pretending it's not happening, or boycott animal using business by not collaborating or cooperating economically. Unpacking the complexities of all the dietary and ethical conflict is challenging. There is no stir-fry solution. Asking people to become vegan is asking them to shift in consciousness, risk relationships, and belong to a minority group. It's worth it. Do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. When a concentrated effort is made to change, it brings change. We can all make a conscious commitment to align our actions with rational ethics and choose to make willing sacrifices to adhere to principles of non-violence in the face of our world's complexities. Go by your gut feeling, literally. Realize, realize, realize. It's an awakening. But after my first day, I never ate another animal again. And soon after, I went vegan. It wasn't a conscious decision, it just happened. And now, I could never go back. Every vegan seems to have their own light bulb moment when something clicked and they stopped eating animal products. You're so disengaged, it doesn't shock you to see their pale soft skin on the counter. Now I think about it, it shocks me that it didn't shock me before. There's a better way to live. It's better for everyone. It's better for the animals. It's a great feeling knowing you have not paid someone to kill an animal for you. It's bad for animals, bad for your health, bad for the planet, bad for humanity. So what are your excuses? Why are you consuming meat and dairy when you don't need to? Now you know. How will you respond? There's only one sensible choice.